Kind of looks like a huge tongue. Hi, I'm Bill. I'm a professional chef, and these are my $112 waffle ingredients. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a home cook, and these are my $14 loaded waffle ingredients. Great. Great. All right. This quick. Haven't seen this in a while. I've got some ideas. <laughs> Salmon! What? <laughs> So the loaded waffles I was going to make were very special, but with a savory twist. Pumpernickel waffles with citrus cured salmon and homemade spring onion cream cheese. This is just nuts. I was planning to make marbled pumpernickel waffles made from scratch. Two different kinds of waffles, white waffles and pumpernickel waffles? Served with a spread of homemade spring onion cream cheese, also fresh made, and topped with a citrus cured Nordic blue salmon. It was going to be fun, savory, and a delicious take on my favorite bagel. The fanciest stuff that my dish had was some homemade whipped cream and real maple syrup. That's it. With Daniel's recipe, I've got ingredients you can find probably in your pantry or at least at your local grocery store. Definitely on the simpler side, but with some technique, we can make it better. If I had to make a guess, I would think this cost probably around $15. 14? Okay, not bad. If I had to guess, given the market value of salmon these days, it probably costs like, what, 75, 80 bucks? 112! Hot dog, that is an expensive breakfast. All right, this is Chef Bill's recipe book, which I'm sure, given the track record, is gonna be super helpful. As you can see, there's all just ingredients, no recipe. So the big thing about my recipe for loaded waffles is it is definitely a two-day affair. We've got yeasted waffle batter, which needs to sit overnight. We're curing fish, making cream cheese, which will strain overnight as well. So I hope you packed your sleeping bag, Daniel. All right. Well, uh, I think now is as good a time as any to call Rose. Hey, Daniel, how are you? I am doing well. It's so nice to see your face again. I don't know where to even begin with curing salmon. How do you cure salmon? All you, all you really have to do is take your sugars. You probably have white sugar and brown sugar, some black peppercorns, some salt. Then you're gonna shave some of the citrus zest. Mental note, need to zest more. You're gonna mix it all together and then you're gonna put it on a tray that fits the salmon pretty well, and then add the salmon skin side down onto that mixture. Gently, gently, gently. Ooh. And then sprinkle the rest of that really nice curing salt sugar combination. Wrap up the salmon in the tin foil, then get another sheet tray, put it on top of the salmon, and then like if you have a nice heavy pot, put it on top of that. Refrigerate for 24 hours and voila, you got really nice cured salmon. Okay. There's like two different kinds of waffles here. I've got white waffles and pumpernickel waffles. Is there a process behind like the white and the pumpernickel? So the method is the same for both. What you're gonna do is you're gonna proof your yeast first. So take your yeast in about a half a cup of warm water. And I'm doing this at the same time because I feel like it's easier that way and I don't wanna mess up. And you're gonna wait for it to bubble a little bit. You're going to take your melted butter and the sugar and your milk, your liquid ingredients, add it to the yeast mixture. After that, you just add the flour and the salt. The pumpernickel waffles have a mix of all purpose and rye flour, mix it all together. It'll be kind of shaggy looking. She got me on a counter. Right, shaggy, ah. The pumpernickel's the same exact method, only you have a few different ingredients. And you're also gonna add molasses, which is nice and dark. You also have a little bit of cocoa powder. Mmm, it smells so good. Which is there not to make these waffles chocolate, but to give them a really nice, dark, deep brown color that you would associate with pumpernickel bread. And then you're gonna cover it and let it rest overnight. Thank you, Rose, for the help on this. So much like everything else today, this will be sitting for a while. So I have a bunch of the ingredients that Daniel sent over to me. I'm gonna combine them in a little bit of a different way to make a creme anglaise or a custard sauce. Custard is dairy and eggs and a sweetener. The perfect custard should be creamy and smooth and this one is going to be pourable. Not horrible, pourable. 
I'm just gonna add my dairy here. Two different kinds, heavy cream, some whole milk, and I'm just gonna gently heat those. I'm gonna add three egg yolks to my bowl here. I'm just gonna eyeball the maple syrup. We can taste it at the end. Now I'm gonna whisk just a little bit of this hot milk into the egg yolks to uh, temper it. Tempering it will prevent the eggs from curdling as we make this custard. I'm slowly just gonna add a little bit at a time until we're all in. And then back into the pot it goes. And I'm just gonna gently stir this with a spatula while it cooks. I'm just gonna add a little pinch of salt here just to bring all the flavors out. Once it comes to almost a boil, that's about as thick as it's gonna get. So that's when you wanna stop it. I'm gonna pour this through a strainer to catch any bits of egg. Make sure it's completely smooth. Mmm, perfect, delicious. So my creme anglaise is done, I'm gonna put it in the fridge. Time to make cream cheese from scratch, which I've never done before. So when Daniel starts making the cream cheese, he's gonna bring all of his dairy to boil. I'm gonna whisk all this together actually, just so it's not all just sitting in clumps. I'll add the salt in as well. Add in white vinegar as the acid. I've got like a nice boil here. I'm gonna add the vinegar now. Let it sit and strain it overnight. I think I like let this sit for an hour. In the pot, undisturbed, all right. So Daniel sent me some very beautiful strawberries. I'm going to be doing a couple things with them, but the first thing I'm going to be doing is dehydrating. I love dehydrated fruit. Uh, you get all that fruity flavor without any of the moisture and it's got a nice crunch to it. So it's gonna be the perfect little garnish for our loaded waffles. So I'm just gonna pop these in here and they'll be in there for about 14 hours. Time to strain the cream cheese. So what I'm gonna do is take this towel and lay it over and just kind of pour everything into here. It's actually kind of dripping out, which is cool. So I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge covered and let it drain overnight. And then in the morning, I will check on this as well as the salmon and the waffle batter. All right. So round two with our strawberries. This time I'll be roasting them. I'm gonna cut these strawberries in half these are just gonna get tossed with a little syrup. Not too much, you want the strawberry flavor to still come through. Sprinkling of salt, one layer down on some parchment. I'm gonna dollop this butter on there. The strawberry juice, the maple, the butter, it's gonna kind of combine to make this really lovely sauce. I'm gonna pop these in the oven at 350 for 15 to 25 minutes until they're perfectly tender and juicy. So the salmon has been curing overnight. Um, so it's time to check on it. I'm excited, I wanna see what it looks like. Look at that. It's like super red now. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna rinse this off now. I almost feel bad washing this. It's like I'm undoing all the hard work. <laughs> How nuts is that? It just stays. I don't know what causes that. I have no idea, but that's like super cool. So I'm gonna pat this dry. All it's left to do is cut this up along with the rest of the garnishes for the waffles. So I'm gonna get that started. Welcome back. I'm going to check on these dehydrated strawberries and see how crispy they are. I'm gonna give these a quick chop. The great thing about dehydrated strawberries is they're nice and tart and they certainly taste like strawberries. Nice little strawberry crumble, a little bit like sprinkles. And here's our dehydrated strawberry sprinkle garnish. It'll look really nice sprinkled on top of the whipped cream. And now I'm going to prep some of my other garnishes. I'm gonna cut up this onion first. Someday I'll be able to just like pop, 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 pop. Today is not that day, because I want to keep my fingers. Small little slivers. So next up, I'm gonna go with the dill. Find the most Instagrammable pieces of dill. Last but not least is the seasoning. Now, I don't know exactly what each one is, so I'm gonna have to refer back to the recipe. So the everything bagel seasoning is super classic. I've just added a little bit of Aleppo pepper in there for some fun. We've got sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, minced garlic, and dried onion. And last but not least, Aleppo pepper. I'm gonna mix all this up now. All right, so I've got my onion, I've got my everything bagel seasoning, and my fresh dill. These are gonna go perfectly on top of the salmon, and the waffle, and the cream cheese. I'm so hungry. Now it's time to make the waffle batter with some good old fashioned Bisquick. I have not used Bisquick since I was a child, and I am excited to remind myself of what it tastes like. So you've got Vegetable oil, cornstarch, flour, sugar, salt, leavening, all in here, ready to go. I'm going to follow the Bisquick recipe for their waffle mix, except I'm gonna make one major change, and that's going to be whipping the egg whites and folding them in to create a little bit of a lighter, more delicate waffle. So I'm gonna separate my eggs to start. Egg whites here, egg yolks straight into my batter. I have this lovely contraption here today. It's okay if you don't have one of these at home, neither do I. Ah, 
I'm just gonna take these to a stiff heat. You could do this by hand, in a stand mixer, with a hand mixer, anything. That'll do. I'm gonna make one minor adjustment as well to this. I'm just gonna add in a little bit extra salt here, just to kind of bring it up a little bit. I'm gonna mix in the milk and the oil according to the box recipe. Okay, now that that's combined, we're gonna fold in the egg whites, gently folding these in. Yeah, my, my mix tends to be a little bit thicker than this. I'm interested to see how this bakes up. All right, our batter's looking good. It's time to make some waffles. Let's cut up the salmon! Rose said nice and thin, so I'm envisioning like locks, kind of like a locks kind of vibe. I think the key here is to like cut into it and then out, and then as you go, kind of smush the salmon behind the knife. That, I think, is as good as I'm gonna get it. Majority of the meat's off. This looks so pretty. Look at that. It's got this really nice, like the zest on it looks gorgeous. Almost looks kind of like confetti sprinkled on top. Okay, the salmon is cut and ready to go. Let's check in on our roasted strawberries. The strawberries are tender, the maple is caramelized. This is gonna be super delicious on a nice crispy waffle. It smells like caramelized maple and fruit. It's really great. I'm just gonna transfer the strawberries and all of the accumulated juices and caramelized maple into a bowl. There we are, our roasted strawberries, ready to top a waffle. Ooh, ooh, cream cheese time. So as you can see, all of the, the liquid in here. Like, look at how much came out overnight. Ooh, it's like solid, look at that. So first things first is me taking this gorgeous looking cream cheese and putting it into the bowl. Oh wow, this is super solid now, holy cow. Spring onion, oof. The spring onion is honestly a take on traditional scallion cream cheese. I mean, spring onion's just a little bit more exciting. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this up a little bit so it's a little more incorporated. Look at how light and fluffy this looks. It kind of looks like whipped cream. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like the consistency is almost, it's like light enough to where it could look like whipped cream. Okay, the cream cheese looks good to go. So now I'm gonna be making whipped cream, but not just any whipped cream, I'm gonna be making maple whipped cream. I'm gonna just simply add the cream, the maple, a little pinch of salt, and charge this canister with some CO2. These little canisters are pressurized uh, CO2, and when I screw this piece onto this, there's a little tip inside that pierces the end of this, pushing the CO2 into the canister, pressurizing that whipped cream, so when I pull that trigger, it's gonna come out like perfect whipped cream. Give it a taste, make sure it tastes like maple. Delicious. <laughs> you leave the batter overnight, and what happens, all the gas just rises up and creates like a balloon effect on both of these. This one looks even more bubbly. To finish the batter the next day, eggs and baking soda will be added. I'm gonna try to do a double single egg crack. Oh. <laughs> that was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Baking soda now goes into the eggs. The baking soda just is going to give it a little bit of an extra lift. And I'm gonna whip this up. I'm gonna just fold this in, uh, just as I feel like I've overmixed before and it's never gone my way. So I'm gonna kinda just <laughs> be a little more gentle with this. All right, this one's done. Uh, I don't wanna leave this sitting out for too long. So same deal, just gonna whip this up. Gentle folding into the rye batter and until all the egg is mixed into the batter. Pumpernickel batter, white batter, bang. Let's put together these waffles. It's time to make some waffles. Daniel sent me this waffle iron. It's a home waffle iron, round. It's not what I usually use. I usually go for a rectangular, uh, deep pocket, sort of Belgian style. So this is actually a way nicer waffle maker than I've ever had or ever used before. So I'm hoping that this will be the key to, to perfect waffles. So to make the marbled rye effect, you're gonna grease that waffle iron and then just dollop in your two different kinds of batter to fill in the space, sort of letting them make that marbled effect on their own. This is so messy and weird looking, but it's okay. While this is nonstick, I still am gonna brush it with oil, just in case. I'm using a scoop to dish out the batter into the waffle iron. I'm gonna go with two scoops here. We'll see how that does. Our goal is to fill the waffle iron completely without it exploding out the sides and creating a disaster. So we'll see how we do. This one is for me, not for Chef Bill. Chef Bill will get the, the pretty ones. Unless these come out pretty, in which case, I might just stop here. This is not scientific, but I feel like when it's easy to kind of release the waffle from the iron, that's when it's done. It's like crispy enough. Oh yeah. 
deep golden brown, crispy on the outside. Looks like a good waffle to me. I'm gonna make a couple more. All right, you know what? I'm gonna peek. I'm gonna peek. Look at that. So there's like a little bit of marbling here, which is nice. They feel like, you know, still a little soft, but like a little crunchy on the outside. Not bad, okay. Uh, I can do better though. Like I said, first one, you gotta shake off the first one all the time, because the second one is where the magic is. Let's try this again. Batter, butter, batter, butter, butter, batter, batter, butter. Okay, okay. You know, let it do its thing. I think this knows way more about waffles than I ever will. They get better as you go, I will say that. The waffles are done. Look at that, they got some nice marbling on here. They're not burned, they're still like a little soft, which is actually how I prefer my waffles. I like them a little crunchy on the outside, a little soft on the inside. Now it's time to throw everything together. Let's do it. I'm gonna put some custard down first. This is thickened up nicely, so luscious. I'm gonna be a little generous on this. That's a loaded waffle. Pile on my roasted strawberries. Another hint of maple. And then finally, the maple whip right on top, finishing off with our little sprinkles. And that's my take on Daniel's loaded waffle recipe. I can't wait for him to try it and I can't wait to see what he did with my recipe. It's time to plate. I wanna find a nice pretty waffle to start with. You can see the marbling on this, which I really like. Logical first step right now, I feel like is adding the cream cheese. Cream cheese layers down. Next, I'm gonna add my salmon. Now, I'll add some onion. And this is more for garnish. Definitely didn't need this much dill, but again, happy to have it and not need it. Might even put a little, like a sprig or two in the middle just to add a little color contrast. The seasoning, I think will go next. I love this stuff, so I might go a little overboard, but I don't wanna like take too much away from the beauty of the waffle here. And honestly, it kinda looks cute on the plate too. Last but not least, capers. I don't think I need too many of these. They are definitely salty. I'm trying to like one at a time get these placed around. I think that's good. This is my take on Chef Bill's loaded waffle. This actually, I think looks pretty good. I cannot wait to see what we do with my ingredients. That's gonna be a ride. Hey, What's up? how's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> this was a ride and a half. Um, I know, it's a lot of a recipe. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> That looks so dope. I, I like need to know what you think of mine. That I guess was... we should do savory first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we'll start with the savory, go <laughs> okay, a little sweet right. after. I actually made myself a plate too because I, I want to dive into this as well. Great. So you go first though, because okay. I'm, I'm like so curious. I want to like okay. hone in and get the general reaction. So good. Yes. <laughs> good. That's unreal. Oh yeah. You might be changing my mind about like waffles. I, I always have only ever had them sweet. I'm so happy. Can I can I try the sweet one now? Is yeah, that... let's do it. I, I want to try yours so bad. I want dessert, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and strawberry too, I guess. Is it good? Good? <laughs> this is this is insane. Oh my god. I love maple whipped cream, it's so good. What is it, you said it was on glaze, like a custard? Mm. What did I give you that you could possibly make into this? <laughs> it's just eggs, just eggs and milk and maple. That is unreal. This guy's a magician, a wizard of sorts. Salmon or six ingredients, he does them both. <laughs> I don't, that's unreal. That's next level. 